this convention in Duluth uh, is a historic day for AFSPE in Minnesota. Uh, today, as a result of our activity and the action of our members throughout the state, the activists they are, the, the involvement in their communities that they have, all the gubernatorial candidates uh, on the Democratic side uh, came to this to meet with us. We had the first televised uh, uh, forum of the election season. Our members felt empowered. Our members felt like they, they mattered, their opinions mattered, and I think we're going to see more volunteers, more activism than ever before. We're going to pound the pavement, make phone calls. First thing we, we're doing is educating our members so that we have them interested and active enough to go to precinct caucuses, participate in the process so we can get a, a friend selected as a DFL nomination. We need a governor that's going to support what we need in this state. Uh, fair taxes. We need fair taxation so we can afford to do the things we need. The services that we provide and the state's in desperate need of and that we've cut back on. The state of Minnesota is in a world of hurt and we need to get people back to work. The unemployment rate is just ridiculous and we need to make sure that working families are a priority for that governor. And they're starting to lose their homes, they're losing their health insurance. Uh, we've had layoffs at our agency and, and people are hurting. So we need a governor who can come in and help the state of Minnesota come back. And what we do as state employees is we help all these people. That's our job as state employees, is to help the people that are hurting. Oh, King Tim, I wrote that that day. Well, the day he announced he was gonna cut all 36,000 people off uh, general assistance medical care. King Tim of Minnesota doesn't care about democracy. King Tim a Minnesota, he wants to be the president, you see. This guy doesn't seem to follow democracy at all. He acts like a king. And I felt a song coming on, and it was written that same day. What can I do to find people who will support a public option, who will support keeping health insurance on the front burner and finally coming up with a solution because we can't keep going the way we are. People, you're the ones that we were the ones we're there. On the line. We're the ones that work in the pediatric clinic. Okay. These are the ones where the kids that come in with the GMC who are going to be hit in the emergency room if they don't have us. Yeah, and I work you know, in yeah. you know, and, and, and it's like they'll still, they'll still have to get medical care, but the cost is going to like triple or quadruple because they're not coming to a clinic, they're going to a ER setting. Well, John Marty says it very well. They all, they, well, any cuts are only going to work if 34,000 people cooperate and never get sick. Yeah. Which is so absurd. I mean, when he says it that way, it's you know it's very well said because it just points out the absurdity of it. So. Yeah. And, and we pay one of the highest premiums working for the hospital as uh, employees. I think we you know, need a system in this country where health care is a right. And the day you're born, the day you die, and people don't have to worry about what job they have or whether they have a job to be able to afford health care. You have health care because you need health care. And we've seen a lot of um, our retirees from the hospital have to come back to the hospital to work just so they can afford their insurance. And that doesn't make sense. I don't want to become a retiree and have to go back to work just so I can pay for my health insurance. We've done a lot of railing with the uh, legislators, talked to city council members. We've, um, we're still doing lots of campaign action um, planning around that to support the hospital and getting money um, for our patients. Well, with Hennepin County, we're in the fight of our lives just to maintain the health insurance that we have. We welcome everybody, regardless what your financial situation is. Um, but it's, it's good to help folks. You know, it's good to be at this hospital. It's, I mean, like I said, we get a variety of folks and they're in need. But we're losing like a lot of money right now, so with the governor's plan and whatnot. So it's kind of scary what's going to happen. We're going to put ourselves in a position like the rest of the Western world that's civilized and has health care for all. We're not going to be 30th in the world anymore. We want to be first. We have a, a tremendous challenge in front of us to set a new direction for the state and to get a governor who cares about public services, the quality of life of Minnesotans, and who wants to invest his or her time and energy in investing in Minnesota. We need a governor who's going to raise revenue fairly, who's going to raise taxes fairly on those who have the ability to pay, so we can invest in education, health care, local government aid, and the things that make our state and our cities great. Our union will continue to walk the same path. We'll continue to carry the same fights that you're carrying. We have the same ending, and that is to change 
the way the political process in Minnesota works. It has not worked. We really all pulled together, not only for our members, but for the people of Minnesota, for the greater quality of life in Minnesota. This not only is an election for a budget, this is a redistricting year. The outcome of this election is going to set the groundwork for the next 10 years for our state. I'd rather see our children, grandchildren, and those who, co who are coming forward have a co higher quality of life rather than ending up uh, the uh, cold Louisiana. We need to make the change. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. This is a fantastic convention, our best yet. Yeah, why? Oh, I mean, the energy in the room is absolutely fantastic. Our members are ready to organize. They're ready to get out there and elect a worker-friendly governor.